All right, I have one more formula to show you that involves either differentiating or integrating with exponential or logarithmic functions. It is an integration formula. We already know how to integrate if we have a base e, but what about if we have an exponential function that has a base other than e? Well, look at right here. It's the integral of a to the dx equals 1 over natural logarithm of a, so whatever my base was, times a to the x, so that original problem is showing up again, plus c, that constant that I have to add. So just to recap, because now you've watched a couple different videos where I've given you a bunch of different formulas, here are all our formulas for derivatives if we have exponential function as our logar logarithmic functions. So e to the u is e to the u times u prime. Remember, if it's e to the x, it just becomes e to the x because if I made x my u, the um, derivative of x is just 1. So e to the u becomes e to the u times u prime. a to the u becomes ln of a times a to the u u prime. So it does that have that additional factor in there. The derivative of ln of u becomes 1 over u times u prime. The derivative of log base a of u, so my base is not e, because remember ln is the same thing of log base e, I get 1 over ln of a times u times u prime. So again, notice I have this extra factor of ln, and a, ln of a, natural logarithm of a, but other than that, they are the same. I still have the 1 over u, u prime, adding in that extra factor. Up here, I still had the a to the u, u prime, adding in that extra factor. So then here recapping antiderivatives versus derivatives involving exponential functions and logarithmic functions. I first have my two exponential functions. The integral of e to the x dx is just e to the x plus c. The integral of a to the x, so using this formula from up top, that new formula, is 1 over ln of a times a to the x plus c. So again, you still have the a to the x plus c, just adding in that extra factor. And then our integral involving logarithmic functions, the integral of 1 over x dx is ln absolute value of x plus c. So let's look at a couple examples using this new formula here where we have an integral of a base other than e. So if I have the integral of 3x, notice my a is 3, so this will become 1 over ln of 3 times 3 to the x plus c, which is the same thing as just 3 to the x over ln of 3 plus c. Looking at two more examples. Example 2, I'm going to do the same thing. But notice that in my first example, I had 3 to the x. I had some a to the x. I followed my formula. In my second, for my second example, I am not following that formula. I have 4 to x minus 1, so I have some function up here. So I'm going to try u substitution. I'm going to let u equal x minus 1. du dx then equals 1 du therefore equals dx, and it's an easy substitution. This becomes the integral of 4 to the u du. So now following my formula, that gives me or that integrates to be 1 over ln of 4, because my a is my base, times 4 to the u plus c. Taking a final step to, in, uh, to place x minus 1 back in for u, I get 4 to the x minus 1, since 1 times 4 to the u up here is just 4 to the x, um, 4 to the u, over ln of 4 plus c. And looking at one final example, I'm going to look at my example 3 here. So again, this is very similar to example 2 in the aspect that I do not have it following my formula exactly because rather than having just a variable up here, I have a function. So I'm going to try u substitution once again. I'm going to let u equal x squared. Therefore, du dx will be 2x and du will be 2x dx. So it looks like it's not quite as simple of a, as a substitution as the last one. I have the x, I have the dx. I need a 2. To get a 2, I'm going to have to put a 1 half out front, giving me 1 half times the integral of 2x, 2 to the x squared dx. Now I have everything I need, so I'm going to go ahead and make that u substitution, giving me 1 half times the integral of 2 to the u du. Integrating this, I'm going to go ahead and follow my formula. My a is my base, 
So my A is my two. So the one half stays out front. And I'll have one over ln of A, which we just said was two, times A to the U plus C. I'm gonna go ahead and put two X, um, excuse me, X squared back in for you, um, giving me, so one half times one over ln to the two is one over two ln of two times two to the X squared plus C. So simplifying this just a little bit, I do wanna point out that if I have that two out front of ln, remember my logarithmic rules tell me I can put it up as an exponent. So this could be ln of two squared, which would just be one over ln of four. And I actually could take the one away, multiply these, and put the two x squared on top, plus C for my final answer.